All right, we'll stick to that top story then for now, that deal between the alleged ringleader of the so-called Qatar Gate scandal and prosecutors, which will see him tell investigators everything that he knows under an informant law, which has only been used once before in Belgium. For more, our international affairs editor, Philip Turrell, joins me now on set. Hi, Philip. Uh, so how significant of an announcement is this, and what do we know about the extent of this scandal? Well, the name is Qatar Gate, and that conjures up what the country of Qatar, which is where the World Cup has just been held uh, last month. And a lot of questions over the past few years about Qatar's human rights and the way Qatar has treated workers who were building all the stadium there. Here is Qatar. And it was only during the World Cup that this affair really first came to light following the arrest of Ava Kiley, the EU parliamentary vice president. We have a picture of her and also of Pier Antonio Panzeri. Now, he is the man who we are talking about here who has said, OK, I am now going to reveal more about what has been going on in exchange for a lighter sentence. That means that he will only be given probably a year in jail, but could face a fine of up to a million euros. So those two, Pier Antonio Panzeri and Ava Kiley, are really the two at the centre of, of all of this. But there are two other uh, assistants who have been arrested. One of them is Ava Kiley's boyfriend, and another one is lobbyists. They are all awaiting trial. So this is really a, a sign of upping the ante in uh, what is going on there. There is no more of what well, we didn't know what was going on. We're innocent. They've all been caught with their hands red-handed, really. And that is why I think we're seeing this plea bargaining. That's going to up the pressure also on Ava Kiley to do the same thing and come up with more information about what has been going on. Now, police have been releasing pictures of the money that they have seized uh, in this. We have 1.5 million euros worth of cash. Uh, there are also uh, packets of money, 20 euros uh, here, 50 euros there, a suitcase full of money over there. All of this was seized from their various homes. Uh, other members of the family have been arrested as well. Uh, as far as Pier Antonio Panzeri is concerned, uh, his wife and his daughter are also under arrest. 700,000 euros has been found at their home. Now, all of this came to light uh, when Ava Kiley went to Qatar and met with the Qatar Minister of uh, uh, Labour and then came back and made a statement in the EU Parliament praising the Labour laws in Qatar, saying that that country was an example. Uh, that led to a lot of questions being raised. An inquiry was introduced and that has provoked these arrests. And I think what we're seeing here, Erin, is maybe the tip of the iceberg. And a lot more people could now uh, face arrest if uh, when uh, Pierre Antonio Panzeri starts talking, he gives many more names of people who hitherto are unknown as having been involved in this. Those are really uh, quite the photos, the stuff of the stuff of films there, really, uh, Philip. So this scandal has been dubbed the Qatar Gate, but other countries are also under the spotlight, including Morocco and Mauritania. What else do we know about their possible involvement? Well, uh, you're right, two, two countries uh, involved in this, as well as Qatar. Uh, first of all, Morocco. Well, at the end of December, the uh, press in Germany uh, revealed that since 2019, uh, the Moroccan secret services have been in contact with the offices of Pierre Antonio Panzeri in a bid to influence what he would say about Morocco, notably on two things. The first one is on Morocco's right to sovereignty over the Western Sahara, and the second one is over Morocco's human rights. Uh, which has been heavily criticised, notably in an EU report back in 2013. Uh, so was money given by Morocco uh, to try to influence EU policy over that? Uh, Morocco has denied it, but uh, the evidence is pointing the finger at Morocco and also at Mauritania. Uh, Mauritania, which has an image problem within the European Union, uh, it's suspected of paying bribes to influence what the EU would say about institutions in Mauritania, the fact that they don't reveal details about how they operate, more money being handed over so that the EU would keep quiet about what exactly is going on in Mauritania. And uh, finally, uh, Philip, this has undeniably, of course, sullied the image of the European Parliament, both domestically and abroad. Uh, so what kind of reforms do you think the EU president uh, has planned in order to kind of salvage the institution's image? Well, this is very bad news for the European Union. This is very bad news for its image. It's also bad news for the EU, not only overseas, but within the European Union itself, which remains split 
on how to move forward and the image it has and how some countries don't really agree with the European Union and the way it functions, notably Hungary, uh, also Italy uh, and Sweden. So uh, this is really coming at a very bad time for the European Union. It's upping the pressure on Roberto uh, Metsola, who uh, is now trying to come up with a series of measures uh, to uh, see what she can propose. Now, what we do know is that uh, she is about to divulge a 14-point plan to try to clean up the European Union. Now, there are some uh, points of those 14, that 14-point 14 plan which are already pretty clear. The first one is uh, preventing third countries like Qatar, like Russia, like China from having an undue influence within uh, the European Union for the end of friendship groups, for example, with those countries which could exert undue influence. Second point, uh, EU MEPs uh, must declare all their outside work from now onwards. That was not obligatory uh, until today. All lobby work by former MEPs is also to be banned for a specific period. We don't know how long that's going to be for, but certainly if you're no longer an MEP, you won't be able to get involved in work with other countries outside the European Union for a fair amount of time once you are no longer an elected MEP. And all trips not paid by the EU Parliament to countries like Qatar, for example, are no longer going to be allowed. Uh, they must be declared and approved before those trips take place. Already a couple of MEPs have come forward saying they went to Qatar, they didn't declare it. I think you can feel that there, is, there are the jitters beginning to be felt by many MEPs that maybe they overstepped the limit and they don't want to find themselves in the dock and be criticised uh, for their role in what could be a very big scandal to affect the European Union. Certainly already is a, a pretty important scandal. Philip Turrell with, the, uh, with that, that, um, that analysis there. Thank you very much.